What's up guys, welcome back to another video here on Muddy Beards. 4x4, today we're going to be taking the skid plate off of my Jeep Wrangler and I'm going to be turning it into a skid plate for the Subaru Overlander for the Gambler 500, so stick around. This is gonna be an interesting project, taking something from my Jeep, turning it into something for the Subaru. The reason I'm doing this is I ran out of money and time for this Gambler 500 thing coming up in a couple weeks because I got a family vacation in there, I'm working full time, there's just no way I can get it all done. And my original plan of buying a big sheet of aluminum and fabricating a full skid plate, making a whole thing out of it, making it really nice, is not gonna happen because of the rim debacle that was in the last video, and now I'm out like $700 having to buy new rims, which I wasn't expecting to do. So now I don't have money for metal. I have a brand new skid plate coming from Barnes Four Wheel Drive for my Jeep, and I'm gonna be reinforcing it, making it a lot stronger than my last one, because this one is slightly bent, makes it difficult to remove and install, so, this has the perfect angles to drop off to cover my oil pan. So I'm gonna unbolt the skid plate, get it laid on the floor, and take some measurements. And I would basically just make this thing out of cardboard first, so I know when I put it onto the metal, I know that it's gonna work, and it has all the right angles and stuff that I need. So let's pull this thing off and then get started. Good plates out, we got ourselves a little Moab mud from a muddy Pritchett Canyon still up in here. This is what I'm talking about right here. This drop. So I need, exactly I measured it, about a three inch drop to drop down from where it's gonna bolt to the subframe in the front to drop down to actually go under the oil pan, which is gonna be perfect. And this actually is an angle as well it's not straight because the frame on the Jeep narrows so when I cut this out I'm gonna be cutting this section out right here um, I'm gonna basically cut it at an angle so it should be basically straight hopefully I mean that's the goal so the simplest way to do this is to get under the vehicle with your tape measure and your cardboard and make some measurements map out exactly where things can go where you want it to go and write it down. I'm just going to write it down on the back of this cardboard as I go and map it out on the cardboard and then I'll go back to metal. Well here's the plan. I got my cardboard cut out 15 inches wide all the way down to 21 and a half tall and I have it bent and measured in the exact same spots as the skid plate currently is bent. So the bolt holes are about 20 inches apart in the subframe so I'm going to take a sheet scrap metal here and make it a plate so the plate is going to bolt to the vehicle and then once I cut this out then this will weld to this plate and we'll have one piece. So this quarter inch plate is absolutely ridiculous for you know the Subaru. I think most people run like an eighth inch plate or something like that or three sixteenths is probably when I build the aluminum one it's going to be a three sixteenths plate so a quarter inch is absolute overkill. This is what I run on the Jeep, quarter inch, pretty much everything. In a vehicle that I'm trying to keep the weight down, this is not helping me at all. But this is gonna be cool, hopefully, and free. So the best thing to do is to just get started making it. So I know I need 21 and a half inch long by two inch wide plate to bolt to, so let's just get started with that and see where it goes. So 
So I got this base plate made up, holes drilled in it, and the bolts that fit this actually I found are some paint matched body bolts from my Jeep Wrangler. So I'm actually going to use them because I think it looks kind of cool. And it being a, my Jeep skid plate and bolts, it's kind of cool too. Let's put this cardboard skid plate on so that'll bolt back there. And that'll be something like this. And I'm pretty happy with that. And then this will be welded to this plate here. So I am not going to trim this or I'm going to leave a little excess on pretty much everything. So that way I can kind of cut round corners, cut things, make them smaller to shave a little weight if I need to. But I think this uh, exact shape is going to work out perfectly. Got the skid plate up here and I'm marking it out where I'm going to be cutting. So cutting all of this out right here, boom, 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 boom. And just need to fire up the plasma cutter and start cutting it out. Um, I'm going to add a little bit of material right there because that's where the oil filter is and it's sticking out a tiny, tiny little bit. So I got it up under here where I want it using the jack and it's pretty much cleaned up, not fully cleaned up yet, but um, I'm just going to get the, uh, the bolt hole locations for the back so I can drill out that one. So I need to drill that hole out. Once I get that hole drilled, then I can come up to the front here and tack weld this front piece in and then we'll take it all out and weld it into place and then do final cleanup and should be good to go. So here it is, all painted up. All my holes are drilled here, here, and then these two guys right there and there. I use Rust-Oleum truck bed coating, and this can was pretty much out. I was trying to get the very last little bit of it to cover this up. That's why I was all spazzing out, shaking it, and spraying at the same time. Don't normally do that. This is definitely gonna be strong enough to smash that whole thing into rocks and hold the whole Subaru up because it would hold up my whole Jeep, no problem. So let's go ahead and bolt it on and we'll see what it looks like. So in order to install this, I did have to cut this little piece off of the front bumper because it no longer can attach here. So it's not really that floppy actually so i'm not super worried about it and eventually i will be building a bumper really soon where i'll probably be cutting most of this bumper apart not sure exactly how much of it yet but uh we don't need this i apologize for the noise but the neighborhood decided they're going to pressure wash everything today so here is the skid plate all bolted in i think it looks pretty sweet it's a little uh rough around the edges but and not perfect, but it is definitely going to work for Gambler 500. Also, did you peep the new wheels? Check those things out. DX4s uh, from Discount Tire, they look pretty sweet. That's gonna wrap up this video. We took something that was basically scrap metal, turned it into something else, which is what I like to do. Although it's not super pretty, it is very functional. It is going to work for sure. Now I know that Barnes Four Wheel Drive does not make anything super specific, but they've been a huge part of this channel and I really appreciate everything they have done for us. Everything underneath my Jeep is Barnes Four Wheel Drive. Everything that they make for the TJ, suspension, links, four link kits, everything, steering, everything 
is Barnes four-wheel drive on my Jeep and I absolutely love it. It works amazing. Now, if you want 10% off anything that they make, they have a lot of builder's parts. So just tabs, joints, all kinds of stuff. You can build whatever you want with it for a Subaru, for a Toyota, for anything that you can think of, a dune buggy, anything. You can use these parts. So if you want to take advantage of 10% off, make sure you use the code MUDDYBEARDS or use the link in the description. It'll give you 10% off automatically. Help support us and help support Barnes Four Wheel Drive, a great made in USA company. Now, another thing I want to talk about is weight. So I'm watching the weight of this build because this motor is very not powerful. It's like 170 horsepower, 210,000 miles. So the Anderson design, Lift kit is about 20 pounds. The skid plate that I'm adding is 27 pounds. So, so far I've added less than 50 pounds to the whole Subaru at this point. So the wheels and tires are 48.5 pounds a piece, which is exactly the same weight as the factory ones. I weighed both of them. I weighed the skid plate. Now the aluminum setup 3 16th plate that covers the whole underside is about 17 pounds. So I lose about 10 pounds in the skid plate area and gain more uh, protection on the underside once I eventually get around to building that or if I end up just buying one that somebody makes. I don't know, but for now, this is gonna work for the Gambler and it'll probably be on the Subaru for quite a while. Now, if you guys like the videos we're making here on Muddy Beards 4x4, make sure you give us a like, leave me some comments down below, Go to our website, muddybeards4x4.com. You can buy shirts, stickers, stuff like that. Help support the channel. And if you want to follow me on social media, I am at muddybeards4x4. And until next time, guys, we'll see you on the trail. Rage on that beat, going crazy.